What is good, guys? It's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's happening with Spy, Tesla, NVIDIA, the QQQ, and a couple of other tickers. I want to break down what's going on with the economic calendar moving forward. Very important factors involved with the markets, which you should be watching for as we approach tomorrow, as I give you guys my predictions. But for everything the devil's information, before I give you guys any more details about the markets, let me just mention a couple of things. I am firstly not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Weeble and deposit $500, you are guaranteed 20 free stocks, not friends in just two days. Anyways, for the market, let's talk about how things are looking. Right now, SPY is attempting to break this high around this 548.5 area. And you guys can see we actually closed above or very close to that level. And we pushed above that during the after hours, which is still showing strength in the charts. So right now, there are still a lot of buyers present. We're still getting, I would say, okay volume. And we're still seeing a lot of attempts to hold support, which suggests that the, the buyers are not necessarily done. In fact, the buyers are still in control of the market as the market is continuing to break all-time highs. So that suggests to us that there is more upside potential. Now, there is a risk in the market. That's the fact that it is heavily weighted by a lot of these tech stocks. They're the ones that are really pushing things up, whereas other stocks are not performing as well. So you can see how like the NVIDIAs out there, the Apples, they're really what's been pushing this market up higher. And it's very, very few stocks, if anything, compared to before. Now, despite that, despite how things are looking, I do want to note that right now, many charts are still bullish and there is a bit more upside potential. But like I mentioned in my video from yesterday, there might be a rejection coming once we approach some key resistance levels. So I'll be breaking down more information about this, talking about what you should be watching for on SPY. But just know that tomorrow, it's going to be Thursday, June 20th, 2024. One hour before the market opens, we have initial jobless claims coming out, some housing data, and then we also have a bunch of data coming out from the Philly Fed, from new orders, prices paid, employment, and factors like that. On top of all of that, we also have the bill auctions coming out at 11.30 a.m., and that's going to be very key for how the market ends up continuing to move. But the main thing to be watching for is one hour before market opens tomorrow, look for some volatility with all this data coming out. Now, on top of all of this, we also have the fear and greed index. Currently, things are a bit more fearful because the market has been pumping like crazy and people are kind of worried like if it could keep on doing this. That's what the overall emotion is right now. But when it comes to the level we're at, so market momentum is based off where we are relative to the 125 daily moving average. So we'd still be in extreme greed mode based off that uh, relative to where our moving averages were before. So there is still greed in the market that's pushing the markets up higher, of course. It's just that the overall sentiment is still more on the fearful side. Sentiment's more fearful, but the position the market's in would actually suggest we're still in a greedy uh, place. And on top of all of this, the puts and call option positioning is still at extreme greed because of the fact that we're still seeing puts at a very, very low level relative to calls. And the ratio is still in a very, very interesting place. So it's been dipping a little bit more because we're still continuing to see uh, a little bit more call buying for the last couple of days and still continuing to dictate price action. Volatility is also quite neutral right now. We're not really seeing a big shift. Uh, the VIX is still below its key uh, moving average. That's the 50 daily moving average. So that's a sign that the VIX is still kind of weak. Now, one thing I want to warn everyone about is the fact that when you look at the VIX, okay, the VIX has this nice gap to fill down here. There's another gap to fill all the way down here around 12. So there's a very, very good chance the VIX will come down to fill the gap, but there's a big but. We also happen to have a nice inverse head and shoulders like structure on the VIX that's developing. So if we do come down a bit to try to fill this gap or at least get to most of it, we could be looking for a big bounce in the VIX that's coming out for later on. So I think, and this is what I think is going to happen. I think the VIX is going to dip more because the market might attempt to hold up or even push a little bit higher for an extended period of time. That's going to be the first thing that happens. The VIX drops, you know, SPY, the market pushes a bit more. But then we're approaching the critical support. The VIX loves to bounce between... 11.5 and around the low 12s. And we're actually very close to that. We're currently at 12.3 uh, right now in the after hours. So what does this mean? This means that I think the VIX is going to dip a bit more. It's a key support. Then we're going to be looking for a big bounce in the VIX because the market is about to get a rug pull. And I think it may happen over the next two to three weeks. So that's something I just want to give you guys a heads up on. That's why I made a video yesterday called Pump and Dump. But for now, okay, for right now going into tomorrow, the charts are still bullish and there is still more upside potential. So starting off with SPY, SPY is still bullish overall. Why? Because we just broke the all-time high again. We actually closed near all-time highs. We're still pushing higher. We could go a little bit higher from here. 
We're going to be testing 549 as resistance. Break this in 550 is going to be our next target. If we lose 548.5, we could be dipping back down towards our 20 EMA in the hourly time frame around the 157.5 uh, area. And if that fails us, I'll be looking at 146.8. And then if we lose that, we'll be looking for a bigger dip, a much bigger dip down to like 545, 544, all the way down there. So lose, basically lose support at 548.5. That's the first sign of weakness. If we lose that, I'll be looking for 547, then more downside. If we break past 549, we're easily going up to 550. And those are going to be your levels for tomorrow. What do I think SPY is going to do? In my honest opinion, I think the odds favor trying to go a little higher. It's still holding up. It actually broke this high right here. So there's still strength in the chart. But there's a big but. We're approaching some key resistance. We're also running on a bearish divergence. We have a triple bearish divergence. Doesn't guarantee anything, but that's just one signal that we have to be a little careful with this rally. So I personally think that SPY will go a bit higher, maybe a little bit more, but then we're going to be hitting some very tough resistance as we get close to 550. And we'll have to be looking to see if we get a little correction, a little rejection from there. All right, for Tesla, Tesla's trading within a range right now. It was actually completely range bound on uh, Tuesday. We have resistance at 185. We have support at 183. Whichever way we break will determine a bigger move. My gut is telling me that, and let me just make this very clear actually before I say that, if we were to lose 183, we'll be dipping all the way down to some balance, taking us down to the 180 area. If we break past 185, we could be pushing all the way back up to 188 to fill this imbalance up here. So that's going to be very key for Tesla. My gut tells me that Tesla looks like it wants to rebound a bit. So we might see a little dip to retest the 50 EMA for another liquidity grab, only to rebound and then try to get back to this imbalance and start pushing back up towards the higher 180s. So look for a little dip to the 50 EMA, then a bounce and a push back up to the high 180s as the most likely possibility. But always have your levels in mind just to be safe because I can't always predict the news for Tesla. Sometimes unexpected things can happen. So, and that's, that kind of applies for all stocks out there. You always want to be prepared for anything. Uh, for NVIDIA, we're still bullish. We're still trying to push higher, but here are some key levels. If we lose 136, I'll be looking for a dip down to 135. If we break past 136.6, we'll be looking for 137. Now, what do I think is going to happen? Well, honestly, guys, I would say that the uh, NVIDIA is looking a little bit more bullish. It could go a little higher because we keep getting bullish news. But I think that the stock is going to eventually show some signs of exhaustion soon. I think that what's going to happen is it's been pumping like crazy for so long to the point where it needs to pull back a bit to be very, very healthy. I think we're going to get a pullback soon. Now, am I saying it's happening tomorrow? No, I'm not saying that at all. At all. I'm saying that right now the market is going to push higher temporarily, but then we're going to get closer to tighter resistance and eventually there's going to be a rejection coming. That's my main uh, you know, projection. But I think NVIDIA could be looking for 137 if we break past 136.6. If we end up losing 136, I think we could retest 134 to retest the breakout area. So all the way down here, the 134 area. If we were to lose 136, I do think that could be happening. But in my personal opinion, I don't favor that. I think that NVIDIA will most likely kind of push a little bit higher, kind of retest this resistance, go a little higher from here, and maybe reject off 137. So look for a little pump and then a dump later on for NVIDIA is the most likely possibility. For Bitcoin, we're still looking bearish. The trend is still in favor of bears as we've been down trending for quite some time. I think that right now, Bitcoin is going to sink a little bit more to this uh, very, very close to where the body is of this candlestick towards 64.3 uh, 64,350. So I see a little bit more downside potential for Bitcoin. So I'll be watching for that very carefully. For the QQQ, okay, I want to note that the QQQ is looking not as strong as SPY. And the reason for that is because we're starting to see a lot of tech stocks kind of slowing down. So for example, we're seeing some tough resistance on like Amazon, on Meta, and also on Apple. And that's actually playing a big role in why we're performing this way. So we have resistance around 486. If that were to break, I'll be looking at 487. That's where the all-time high was. And if we end up breaking that resistance, I'll be looking for a bigger push uh, all the way up towards 490. If we end up losing 484, I'm sorry, not 484, 484.8 to be precise. If we lose that support, I'll be looking for 484 flat. And if that breaks, we're going to be looking for a big move down to the lower 480s. Okay, so lose 484, we turn a little bit more bearish. Break past 486, I could see a test of the all-time high. Uh, that's going to be another tough resistance because we did get projected off 487 two times. 
Uh, so we'll have to see how it goes. But here's my prediction. I think that the QQQ might go a little higher. It might try to push up for 486. I think we could try to break this and then retest the all-time high or get very close to this, uh, just under 487. So it might go a little higher, and we'll have to see if we get a rejection or not. Two times the QQQ hits just almost 487, and we got rejected. So there might be a little pop coming, but we'll have to watch to see if we get a rejection. I'll be watching that very carefully. For a few more, we also have Apple. Apple's also in a very, very interesting place. Apple has resistance around this 214 area. If we break through this, I'll be looking for 216. We also have support down at 212. If we lose 212, I think Apple's going to be dipping all the way down closer to 210. Now, look at the current chart. I see a head and shoulders like structure. We have a left shoulder here, like a head up here, maybe a right shoulder that could be forming. So I think Apple does have potential to kind of dip a bit because when you look at this trend, Apple had a high up here. We had this high up to 220. After we got the very bullish, you know, AI news from Apple, we came down, made a lower high, and now we're starting to kind of downtrend a bit. Also, this, the stock is showing some signs of weakness, looking at the fact that we had a high here, came down, made a lower high. So this is showing a trend shift. So to me, it looks like Apple may dip a little bit off this head and shoulders all the way down to 212 or even lower than that. Uh, with that being said, guys, that is it for the main five. Now let's just go on a speed run for the rest of these. For Palantir, we're still looking quite bullish. We have a bullish wedge that's forming, and we're, we're actually breaking out very nicely. So it's looking very strong on the one-hour time frame. Also, the four-hour is showing a lot of strength. So to me, it looks like Palantir is going to test this top right here in the 26 to 26.5 area. So I think we're going to be pushing all the way up there. We'll have to see if we reject off that formula, like a nice cup and handle or something very similar. So I think Palantir will be testing 26.5, go a little bit higher. We'll see if it rejects or not, but look for a little bit more upside as the main move. For Supermicro, we're still looking bullish overall, but just know that the last time we hit resistance around 950 to 975, we did reject two times. So look for a little bit more upside on Supermicro. We could be approaching 943 all over again. And if that breaks, we could go to 975 before we reject. But I think that what's going to likely happen is we're going to reject off one of those two levels. So look for a little bit more upside. 943 could be coming, maybe a little bit more, uh, maybe even higher than that. And then we'll see where we end up rejecting. For Rivian, we're trying to rebound a bit. I am seeing potential for this to go all the way up towards 11.14. If we do break that, we'll be looking for a push for 11.6. If we lose, 10.9 uh, will be dipping lower. So we're, I'm seeing a nice uh, shift on the four hour. This looks a little bit more bullish. So I think 11.4 is very probable. So I'll be watching to see if that ends up being the case. For SoFi, SoFi has a nice looking inverse head and shoulders like structure that's kind of like forming right here. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we actually try to base around 6.4 to make our way back up towards 6.61 and then 6.8. So look for a nice little accumulation, a little bounce right here. That looks more probable to me. We might be looking for 6.8 very soon for a little temporary bounce. For the IWM Russell 2000, not looking that great. We're on a downtrend. You guys can see the trend. It's very bearish for now. Uh, and also, we're struggling to break past 202, our 50 EMA. So I think what's going to happen is we might go a little higher towards 202 to 202.5. That's where our 50 to 200 EMAs happen to be. And we'll be watching to see if you get a rejection or not. Look for a little pop and see if you reject. If you reject, there's going to be a move back down towards 198 or lower. Right over here, I'll be looking at this previous resistance being retested. If we break through, you know, 202.5, then we're going to be bullish. I think 204 plus is coming. But look for a test of 202.5 tomorrow. Break it, we're going to push higher. If we fail, we're going to get a rejection. I'm going to be looking for a little more upside than we'll see if we reject or not. AMD is looking kind of weak. We're on a bit of a downtrend on the four-hour time frame. We're still looking bearish. So we're going to be testing support currently around 153. That's where this imbalance happens to be. I think if this breaks, we'll go all the way down towards 150. To me, the chart looks bearish. I think 150 is likely coming, but we might get a bounce once we hit that level. So I see a little bit more downside, and we'll watch and see what the reaction is from there. For ARM, it's looking bullish to me. It's actually approaching these crazy highs. And it's looking very strong. So I think 175 is going to be tested. It's a very psychological level. If we break that, we could go all the way up to about 180. But then once we get to those high levels, I do see it kind of retracing back down towards 165 to retest the breakout area. So look for a little bit more upside. I think we could get very close to 175, if not 180, and then see if we get a rejection or not. But I do favor that, at least for now. For Coinbase, we're on a bit of a downtrend. We formed a double top right here. We're actually looking kind of weak. And then when you zoom out, you can see there's an imbalance to fill all the way over here around 230. So it does look a little bit more bearish to me. And I think that what's going to happen is we pop a little bit tomorrow. Looking at this, we're going to retest like 240 or so, then continue to sink down towards 231. I find that to be very probable. Uh, Amazon, not looking that great. We're kind of stuck right now in a range for the past two days it's been like this. 
Support is at 181.75. Resistance is just under 184. To be bullish, you want to break 184. To be bearish, you want to see it lose 180. Though just under 182, like 181.75. If we lose that, we'll be dipping. My gut tells me it's just going to trade sideways in a, in, in a range for now. So tomorrow it's going to rebound, most likely to retest 183.68. And we might just trade sideways for now. It's all it's really doing. So we just have to wait and see which way it breaks for the bigger move. But there is weakness on Amazon nonetheless. Meta is also showing some signs of weakness. We had a high here, came down. We had a lower high, came down. So we're making lower highs and lower lows. Uh, look for a rebound tomorrow. Looking at the wick that formed, I, I see it testing 502, if not 505 again. But then we could reject again and establish another lower high. So look for 502, if not 505. Then maybe it projects and comes back down for a pop and a drop-like move. For Microsoft... Microsoft is turning on the four-hour time from showing some weakness right now. I think it might get a test of its 20 EMA, so we might actually see this turn over a bit. So we could be retracing back down to about four, I would say close to 444. That could be coming for a little dip. That's where our 20 EMA is going to be by tomorrow. This is also where the previous resistance happened to be. So I see us getting very close to 444, so watch for that very carefully. Google's also looking kind of weak. We have kind of like a head and shoulders like structure. If we end up losing our critical support over here around 175, I'm going to be looking for a big drop on Google. I'm seeing you know a head and shoulders, and so far it has a lot of merit. Uh, we have to watch for confirmation or break below 175 to start sinking. I do favor that a bit more. GameStop and AMC are not looking that great. GameStop is still below uh, the 28 to 30 area, so I think it might dip a little bit and just trade sideways. Look for a test of 22, then a bounce back up and just sideways price action. Same thing with AMC, looking kind of weak trading sideways. I don't see much going on. We could be retesting 4.7. Uh, but uh, if we were to lose the support right here at 4.7, I'll be looking for this gap fill. Uh, we could be retesting 4.64, then eventually come down to fill the gap at 4.35. So I'm seeing some bearish potential off the head and shoulders. Uh, DJT, I know people are interested in this. It's still looking very bearish. Uh, I see this dipping all the way down to at least 22 now. There's no sign of a bounce, so it's still looking very weak. The VIX might dip a little bit more to finish filling its gap. So I could see a little bit more downside. I think we have a gap to fill. So that may get filled because of the market pushing a bit more. But as the VIX approaches 11.5 to 12, historically, it loves to bounce. And the VIX is going to likely get a big bounce, a big reaction, because the market is going to get a little rug pull soon. Now, am I saying tomorrow? No, I didn't say tomorrow. I'm saying that we have to watch resistance first for spying the others as we're going to push it a little bit higher. But then there might be a rug pull coming a little bit later after that. But for now, there's, the market is still bullish. The VIX does suggest a rug pull will be coming soon. But we have to wait and see for when it ends up falling. The 10 year treasury yield has been dipping after the Fed speakers. This is what's also helping the market push a bit. Uh, but I don't think this is going to affect the market as much. We have external factors which will have a bigger effect. For now, as this is dipping, this is helping the market push, but it might not be as impactful as it was before, in my opinion. And then we have the dollar index. The dollar is currently at support at our 50 EMA. If it breaks past 105.28, if this gets a bounce, this could actually cause the market to dip a bit. We're not there yet. It's still on a bit of a downtrend. You guys can see it's been downtrend, which is why the market's pushing. So we'll wait and see. If it breaks 105.28, we're bullish, uh, at least on the dollar, which is bearish for the markets. If we lose 105, it's going to see a big rug pull. That's going to be bearish for the markets as well. So we'll just wait and see how things go. But anyways, guys, that is it for the video. So as of right now, the market is still looking more bullish and there is upside potential for SPY as we're seeing futures holding up. But like I said before, we're approaching some tough resistance as we go a little higher. And we'll have to watch to see if the market gets a rejection very soon, at least within the next two weeks. All right, so that's it for the video. Thank you all so much for listening. I will see you guys very soon tomorrow morning before the market opens to give you guys another update on initial jobless claims. Until then... Take care, guys. Enjoy your Juneteenth weekend. Enjoy what life has to offer, and I'll see you guys very soon on the next one. Thanks again, and peace out.